I'd like to continue reading Shouting at the Rain, Chapter 6, Lightning Boy. When I show up at the seaside the next day, Brandy is sitting on the kitchen counter talking to her mom. Hey, Dells, she greets me, wiping her chin as strawberry juice runs down it. I notice her fingernails, bright blue. Her toenails are red. I glance at her mom, same colors. Looks like the Manny Petty went well, I say. My smile makes me feel like my face will crack. And I feel guilty. You're not supposed to be jealous of a friend, are you? Brandy turns back towards the counter so I can't see what she's doing. Then she spins around wearing new sunglasses. Aviators, I think. You like? She asks. We got them yesterday. Yeah, they're cool, I say. Surprise, she yells, pulling out a second pair. We got some for you, too. Then, all of a sudden, I'm happy. Happy that they thought of me when they were out. Thanks. I smile and slip them on my face. And I like the way they look in the reflection of her glasses. I like the way they make me feel, too. We high five. I turn. Thank you, Mrs. Feister, I say. They really are cool. You're very welcome, Delcy. Brandy seemed to think you two had to have matching ones. She turns back to the counter laughing. Brandy and I head outside wearing our sunglasses and sit at one of the picnic tables. The new guy in charge of taking care of the place is fixing the lid on one of the grills. He nods at us. Grammy told me about him. She said that he seems to be able to fix anything that either God or man has made but he isn't one for conversation. I turn to Brandy, pushing my glasses up my nose. So what should we do? You want to build a sandcastle with a moat? See how long the castle can last? Deepest moat in Cape history. She looks at her nails. I can't dig in the sand with a new manicure, she tells me. We could go clamming. Mm, too messy. Too messy? That's something I've never heard from her before. Wait, I know. Let's make a new fairy house. Are you kidding? What? It would be fun, I say. Right after finger painting and Play-Doh? When I look down, my sunglasses fall off. As I bend over to pick them up, I hear her sigh. <sighs> Is Amy around? She asks. No, we're not going to see her much this summer, I say. She got the lead in the Cape Playhouse musical. She turns her head quickly. The Playhouse? Seriously? I laugh a bit. Yeah, I know. Rehearsals start this week. It's a big deal for her. She's playing Annie. That's cool, Brandy says, but she looks bored as she flops down the gra on the grass and picks out clovers. So is your oldest bird, living bird still alive? I laugh. Yeah. Please tell me your bird's name is still Birdie. I laugh again. Yep. You know I was in diapers when I named the thing. Last year then? I give her a little shove. You're hilarious. Well, you want to go for a run? I ask. Me? No way. Plus it's too hot. She looks up at me. So did you ever join track? No, but I've been training for a 5K in Yarmouth this September. It will raise money for heart disease. Aw, oh, is that for your papa? I nod, thinking about the day Grammy told me he had a heart attack, about how Brandy stood next to me then and put her arm around my shoulder at his funeral, about how the world had felt like a different place ever since. I look out at the clouds forming over the ocean. I can tell that rain is coming. Brandy tickles my feet. Are you wearing shoes now that you run more? Nope. I do everything possible to avoid shoes. She looks at my feet more closely. Ew, your feet look like they were in a knife fight. You walk over glass or what? Probably, I tell her. But I don't remember feeling anything. Well, you're braver than me. I love my sneakers. Do you still sleep with them on? She gives me a little shove. That was forever ago. Fourth grade wasn't that long ago. 
Now that's weird. Admit it. No way. Never. Then she looks over at me with her sunglasses. So what's the plan? Should we go for a swim? We have new boogie boards. I look back over the ocean. We can't go swimming, I say. A storm is coming in. The weather says cloudy, but no rain. I realize that I forgot to check our weather station at home today, but I'm pretty sure I'm still right. No, nope, rain is coming. Those are cumulonimbus clouds. Besides, can't you smell it? Smell it? Yeah, smell it, seriously. You don't smell the rain? It's beautiful. I think you've baked your brain in the sun. That's what I think. Soon, a light rain begins to fall, and Mrs. Feister yells, Oh no, girls, please run down to the beach and collect my towels. Brandy looks at me like I have special powers, and we leap up. By the time we've taken just three steps, the rain has started coming down like God pulled the plug on the bathtub. You were so right, Brandy yells as she runs. We laugh running across the grass as tiny water bombs drop from the sky. The rain doesn't just fall, it's driven, carried by the winds. Out over the sea, the dark clouds flicker like heaven is about to lose power. At the top of the stairs, I see some sheet lightning in the distance, which is one of my favorite kinds. I stop to count, so I'll know how far away the storm is. Five seconds in between, seeing the lightning and hearing the thunder means it's one mile away. As I'm counting, as my counting reaches five, the thunder cracks and rumbles above, shooting vibrations through the wooden steps. The storm is one mile away. Brandy squeals, running down the steps, and I follow. She scurries around, gathering towels and flinging them over her shoulder. But I am stuck in place, staring at a boy wearing black jeans and a long-sleeved black t-shirt, even though it's summer. He stands at the water's edge, looking out over the ocean. Hey! I yell. It's dangerous to have your feet in the water during a lightning storm. Dells, come on, Brandy yells, bolting up the stairs in a frenzy. There's a flash, then I count. After four seconds, the crack of thunder sounds like a giant breaking the sky in two. The storm is closer. Hey, I yell to the boy. Did you hear me? Get out of the water. The boy lifts one foot and steps back. He never turns around to look at me, and I'm tempted to go over to see his face. Brandy yells again, Delcy, what are you doing? Come on. I spin on one foot and run with her. But with every step, my brain asks another question about the boy dressed completely in black who stands at the water's edge in the middle of a lightning storm. Chapter seven, playing games. Jeepers crow, Grammy says, coming up behind me at Seaside he Heaven. I need your help with one of the rooms. The people turn the furniture upside down and ask me to have the undersides of things cleaned. I don't think it's a joke because they left a hefty tip. I help Grammy with the cleaning, but turning the furniture back over is hard, so she calls the office and asks for help. Soon, the new guy who helps take care of the place shows up. Behind him is the boy in black. Grammy extends her hand, Bridget McKill. Thanks so much for coming over. I don't know what these people were thinking. The guy reaches out and shakes Grammy's hand. Yeah, you never know, he says. He turns to me. I'm Rusty Gale. This is my son, Ronan. Gusty Gale, I blurt out. That's the best name ever. I mean, ever in the history of the universe and the world. I totally love it. Fathers and sons' eyebrows both pop up at the same time, like they practiced it. It's way better than plain old Delcy McHill, I explain. Grandma scoffs. Delcy McHill, why your name is like a song, honey bunch. Gusty Gale is, she glances his way, well, very nice too. Grammy turns a little bit red. Well, thank you both, he says, chuckling. My legal name is Sherman, but I go by Gusty. Oh, I don't blame you, I say. Sherman is an old guy's name. 
but Gusty's a guy who treats everyone to fish and chips on a Friday night. It's much better. Grammy bursts out laughing. You can see that we always know what Delcy's thinking. No worries, Gusty says. I prefer people who say what's on their mind. Well, no worries there, Grammy says. The boy finally speaks. You do know what a gale is, right? And what gusty gale would mean? Oh yeah, a stormy storm. He's two words that kind of mean the same thing, like soaking wet. Yeah, well, some say I am pretty stormy, Gusty says. I turn to Grammy. Maybe I need a weather nickname too. How about Muggy McHill or Monsoon McHill? The first few notes of a song begin on Grammy's radio, and I recognize it right away. The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. My Papa Joseph loved that song, I blurt out. I bet the captain in this song was named Gusty Gale. Well, Gusty begins, considering that that's a song about a ship and crew that met their end, I sure hope not. The boy Ronan eyes me the way you would an alien stepping out of a spaceship asking for pie. Gusty stuffs his hands in his pockets. I've never lost a crew member, thank God, but I have lost a fishing boat to a storm. The Inanfundavel. What a shame it was. Haven't forgiven myself. Never will, I imagine. His son gives him a puzzled look. I guess he didn't know about that. Well, I'm glad you're okay. My papa used to say that anything made by man can be replaced, but not so much with things made by God. He nods slowly. Yep, that's true for sure. Then he takes a deep breath, lifts his head, and taps the side of his son's arm. He points with his chin towards the room, and Gusty and Ronan flip the furniture back over for us. Grammy reaches for the tip to the customer's left and holds out a $5 bill to them. Ronan reaches out, but Gusty steps forward. Nah, that's okay. You keep that. He nods at his son. And they both give a wave and turn to go. Ronan glances back quick, not at me, but at Granny. I find Brandy before reaching the beach. She's sitting at a picnic table playing cards with a girl that I don't know. Hey, I say. Sorry I'm late. I was helping Grammy clean. I look at the girl and hope she isn't staying in that room. The girl only looks at me for a second. Hey, Dells. This is Tressa. Her mom works with my mom. They are renting a house a few blocks from here for the summer. That's cool, I say. It's your turn, the girl stares at Brandy. What are you playing, I ask. Gin rummy. Brandy picks up a fan of cards and glances at me. I know that look. She's got lots of points. Can I play? I ask. Sure, Brandy says. Wait, Tressa says. We're playing to 500. How can she jump in in the middle? It'll be okay, Brandy says. I'll give her half my points. Thanks, I say, falling onto the bench next to Brandy. Tressa tosses her cards down. Never mind. I was getting tired of this game anyway. She swings her legs around and stands. So this is the famous Cape Cod, right? What do you all do around here anyway? Well, we whale watch for one thing, Brandy says, bumping my shoulder with hers. Delcy, my mom is taking us on a whale watch for my birthday on Friday. You can come, right? Are you kidding? Yes, and I've already got your present. Something no one else will get you, for sure. Should I worry? She asks, smiling. Maybe a little, I say, locking eyes with her. Although I know she'll be happy with her gift. I'm the one who thinks it's kind of creepy. Tressa rolls her eyes. Well, that's real exciting. And what else do you do here? I open my mouth to say something to Brandy. But she jumps up before I can get it out and follows Tressa down the beach. The little voice warns me.